are you fired up? Because I sure am. I'm so excited today. I've got Matt McWilliams. I've personally worked with him. He is an affiliate marketer as well as an online digital marketer. He has an awesome book coming out labeled Turn Your Passions Into Profits. I'm going to let him tell you more about it, but I am thrilled to have Matt on Fired Up. Hi, Matt. How you doing? Krista, thanks for having me again. Good to see you. Um, so me tell me, so you've got a book launching. I know you've been working on this for like almost two years now, um, yeah. which is insane. And it is launching, um, coming here in just about seven days or so. So tell me, we're going to get yeah. this on the line right away. So tell me about your book. Oh my gosh. So the, I mean, the, the subtitle, right? The proven path for building a, a rewarding online business. That's, that's what it's all about. Like the, the whole premise of the book, I mean, this has been two years in the making, but really about eight years in the making because the outline for the book was eight years ago. And I, I, I stayed as one of those 87% of the population who says they want to write a book, but never does. Yes. And then we finally had what many would call, you know, and I'm not diminishing the bad things that happened with the pandemic. Please don't misunderstand me. But for many of us, we got to do things that we never normally had time for, like hiking. I went on so many hikes in the early days of the pandemic because there was nothing else to do. You yeah. know, it's like, we've got to get out of the house. Let's go on a hike where we're not near anybody, you know? And, um, but one of the things that it allowed me to do was to be able to get started on this book without excuses. You know, I had a, a slower time and by gosh, I, I had the time to do this. And so I did. And so ultimately the, the whole premise of the book hinges on one belief. And that is that the world needs your message. You know, the world, you have a message inside of you, uh, an idea, something that you're passionate about, that your passion but the world needs that message, but we're not going to wait passively or patiently for it. We need your message, but we are going to move on without it. And the problem with that, the problem with, oh, well, the world's going to move on without my message, big deal, is you are uniquely qualified to reach some number of people. It might be a thousand people. It might be a hundred thousand people. It could be in the millions. I don't know. But you are uniquely qualified to reach some people. And if we have to move on without you, we're not getting the best message for us. And so that really is the whole premise of the, the the book is just that the world's changing. The economy is changing. The economy has changed since you and I started recording this a few minutes ago. You know, it is changing so fast. So we become a messenger economy. We become an economy based on people spreading ideas and messages and taking their passions and getting those out into the world. Oh, I love it. I love it. So exciting. And one thing I just want to say is I think some people think that, well, I don't know anybody. I don't have a list. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know millions of people and, you know, there's something called influencers and I don't believe influencers are necessarily leaders. You yeah. might have a lot of followers, but if you're not really truly making an impact or leading or helping people, it doesn't make a difference. You just need a small amount of people to actually turn your passion mm -hmm. into a profit. So I, I just want to clarify that because I think people think you need to know a lot of people or have a big list, which isn't true. Uh, I mean, I wasn't born with an email list. <laughs> I wasn't born. I mean, I don't know who, like if anybody listening was born with a social media following, none of us were, none of us were, we weren't born with those things. Uh, those things come from the effort. I mean, the, the whole, you know, step. So step one of the book is clarify who you help. All right. So we talk about how to get clear on your audience. Step two is commit to leading. We could probably come back to that because it's an important mindset shift that a lot of people have. Step three is, is all about capturing attention. You know, how do we stand out? I write in the book, like it has never been easier in all of human history. If you think about like 2023, it has never been easier to get attention, all right? To, at any point in human history, if we go back a go back 25 years, most people didn't have 10 people outside of their county who weren't family that had ever heard of them. 150 years ago, you didn't know anybody outside of your, your three county area. And nobody knew who the heck you were. Today, you can be a complete nobody. You don't have to be a quote unquote influencer. You don't have to have a big audience. You can put something on the internet and 50 people can see it pretty fast. Like all over the world. Like think about how mind boggling that is in, today, you know, in today's time. And occasionally if you post something of note and a few people notice it and then they share it and then they share it and then they share it, you could even have a thousand people in a matter of minutes seeing your message. That was impossible 25 years ago. It just was not a thing that could even happen. It's, so it's, it's never been easier to get noticed, but the converse of that, and they're related, there's a correlation here, 
it's never been harder to stand out because it's never been easier to get noticed. There's a hundred people a day that you've never heard of that you notice. Mm -hmm. There's all these things happening, the 24 hour news cycle and all these things happening on social media. And, and, you know, we talk about like, I was talking with my, my in-laws the other day and they were like, well, that was back in our day when we left the doors unlocked and all that crime is up. I'm like, actually statistically crime is down. The difference is you just know about every time something happens in some place that 25 years ago, nobody even knew existed. You know, we know I, about I the didn't know that. I yeah, didn't know we, crime was down. I thought it is. I think it's all you ever hear about. Wow. Yeah. If you Google the statistics, they, they, it went up in 2020. Well, understandably so. You know, it's kind of what happens when you lock people up for six months, they begin to get antsy, you know, and that's a whole different thing. So it went up in 2020, but then it's back down. If you look at it, if you look at 2019, it was the lowest that it had been in like, I don't know, 80 years or something, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, but because we hear about it and the, the point of this is we are flooded with all this information. We know about every, who cared if they're like, and I don't mean this to be crass and I don't mean this to be insensitive, but if some kid was kidnapped 18 States away, did we even know about it 35 years ago? No, we knew about it. If it happened in our area, we didn't even know if, if it happened across the state, we didn't know about it. Now we know about it in real time and we're following the case and it's, a, it's three time zones away. So that's my point though, is that like, we're I so, so, you're, so you, there's like, it's never been easier to be known, but never been harder at the same you time because there's out. so much, yeah. you know, there's so many people out there. I always say like, attention is currency, right? Attention mm. is currency. So everyone's constantly trying to get attention because attention is currency, right? So it's difficult, exactly. it's difficult to get. Okay. So go over the nine steps. And then I want to go back to the one that you talked about as far as leadership number two. So what are the different nine steps? Yeah. If you can give us a few bullet points on each so they know what to expect in the book. That'd be great. Yeah. 10 steps. So number one, yeah, clarify right. who you help, right? We got to get clear on, on what, what is our passion? Who do we serve? And, and really the, the whole premise of this one is the key to, to clarifying who you help is to be intentional, all right? Like you get to choose who you help. You get to choose who your audience is. If you try to serve everyone, you end up serving no one. And we walk you through how to get clear on that. There's three questions to ask yourself. Uh, and then we walk you through how to develop an ideal customer avatar. Number two is commit to leading. We'll come back to that one. Number three is to capture attention. We've got to capture attention. You cannot, like, not going to wait to get attention. Attention. We got to capture it, all right? So we got to reach out into what we were just talking about. We got to grab it. I walk you through how to stand out in this one. Um, I'm, I'm going to share one thing from there. And that is one of the ways that we can stand out is our, is our style and our personality. You know, like there's a, there's a story I tell in the book about Chris Rock and somebody went up to Chris Rock. So when we think about how we need to be able to stand out and they said, Chris, are you, are you like this always? Like he just come off stage and you know, Chris is, woo, you know, he's like, he's really like he's different, right? You think and he's like, yeah. no, I'm not this way. I'm, I'm, you think I'm this way with my friends and my family. I'm me on stage, but I'm three times me. In other words, it's it's what is unique about you already, but it's three times you. So I always tell people a great example of that is if you have a little bit of a Southern accent and I used to, but I don't because I've lived in the Midwest for too long now. But if you've got a little bit of a Southern accent, turn it up a little bit. Don't Don't be disingenuous. You're not trying to sound like you're from Boston. That's being disingenuous. But if you have a little bit of a Southern accent, just let it ride. Like, that's all I'm saying is like, you stand out in the marketplace in a marketplace full of people. One of the reasons why Zig Ziglar became such a legend, no doubt about it, because he was from Yazoo City, Mississippi and sounded like he was from Yazoo City, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So stand out. I share some attention triggers in there as well. Step four is you got to convert people into subscribers. So I talk about creating a lead magnet. How do we create a lead magnet that actually converts? And one of the my favorite stories in the book, and I tell the story about my dad, is I'm talking about when you're creating a lead magnet, we don't have to create these fancy lead magnets that are 12 pages long and all this. We want it to address an immediate or pressing need in or want in our audience. That's all we want. We want to give them a quick win. And I share the story about my dad in this. It's, it's my favorite story in the book because my dad never got on the internet never owned a computer, never had a phone, a telephone. Uh, he had a telephone, but he never had a cell phone. And my dad had the best lead magnet of anybody that I've ever seen in my life because my dad was a golf instructor. My dad would walk up and down the practice tee at the golf course and he would look for somebody who was in pain. Now, I don't mean they were in physical pain, like, ow, my back hurts. But he would, he would, they would hit a shot and they'd slam their club down and they'd hit another shot and they'd be like, oh, stupid game, I hate this stupid game. 
and you say, Hey, can I help you out for a minute? And sure. Help me out. And you say, try this. And you give them one little tip, a quick win. So this is that quick win that they get right away. They'd hit a couple of great shots and they go, Oh my gosh, those are some of the best shots I've ever hit in my life. How do I get more lessons like this? And then he would sell them a thousand dollar golf package. So smart. That's what a lead magnet is. That's how we capture people's attention there. Step five, you got to convene and cultivate community. So we're going to build a culture. We're going to build an audience of people who connect with each other. Step six is we want to champion a cause. Like we we want a hero. We run, we're going to be the hero to our audience. And if you're in that, if you're in a niche, like my friend, Adam Lean, he's an account, he teaches accountants. He was a client of ours. And Adam was like, Matt, I, I teach accountants. How, how is that heroic? How, how am I going to be a champion for my audience? I said, you told me when we first talked, when I was selling him on signing up with us, you told me that you help the average client work 10 to 20% less and make 10 to 20% more money. Forget about the making an extra 20, $30,000 a year. Let's forget about that being heroic in and of itself. But working 10 to 20% less, all right? Why don't you go ask the kids whose dad suddenly never misses a game, the wife who suddenly gets a date night every week with her husband, if what you do is heroic or not? I love so that. When you start thinking about the impact you can have, we're a champion for their cause. And we walk you through that. And that's something we can come back to as well. Step seven is we want to create raving fans. All right. I walk you through 10 ways to create raving fans, how to actually create that next level avatar. The people who just, they buy everything you offer. They, they tell 10 friends about you. Step eight is condition your audience. We got to condition our audience to, to know what to expect from us. One way or another, you're conditioning your audience. Uh, step nine, you got to commit to monetizing. I'm sure we'll come back to that one because that is, like you said earlier, you know, a lot of that is affiliate marketing. That's uh, not surprisingly, monetizing is my passion. Helping people to do step nine is my passion. So it is the longest chapter in the book, you know. <laughs> and step 10 is we got to create consistent content. And if you were taking notes there, you probably notice all those steps began with C. Uh, that's actually just so I can remember them, to be honest, you know. Uh, but no, it's also makes it really creative. So yeah, that's that's the whole path there in order. It's so funny. I have, I have, I have a thing I call it the nine. So you got to commit to consistently producing content correctly. So you make a connection, mm. convert more clients. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. It's like the nine C's. Okay. Yeah. So I love that. Okay. So go back to step number two, which is the mm. leadership aspect of it. Cause I think the leadership is a huge part of, of converting. And there's also a heavy um, crown, like heavy is the burden I hate, like, mm. what's that saying? Heavy is the uh, heavy is, is the head that wears the crown. Yes, yeah. and 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 it, and it can be hard and scary and it is. the limelight. Yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of people say, and like they don't see themselves as leaders. They're like, I'm just a a person who helps people do a few things. You know, I'm not like I felt this way. And this was one of those things that was really hard for me to, to wrap my head around. Was like, oh my gosh, when somebody signs up for my email list, they see me as the expert. When somebody signs up for my email list or follows me on social media, they see me as a leader. Oh my gosh, that means my opinion matters. That's that's really hard to wrap my head around because I'm I'm just me. Like I'm just Matt McWilliams. I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I have two kids. I coach my kids soccer, and I'm just a normal dude. Like I wear the same thing every day, and I'm not like flashy about it. That's just my personality. Like so, it's really hard for me to be like, oh my gosh, tens of thousands of people look at me as a leader. That's freaking me out. And that's what a lot of people say. It's hard. It's scary. I'm not qualified. It's overwhelming. I'm, I'm inadequate. And those responses are perfectly understandable. Like that's exactly how I felt, right? They're normal. The problem is they're focused on me. When I say I'm not qualified, I'm inadequate. It's hard. That's focused on me. It's not focused on my avatar. Yes. Yeah, it can be scary. I every day I feel inadequate. I felt inadequate to even have this do this podcast today, Krista. Like for me to come on here and talk about, you know, here's exactly how you should build an online business, the proven path to building a rewarding online business. Like, why is it proven? Who am I to share the proven path? I mean, yes, I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people who've done this, but I still don't feel like I, I'm qualified. But the thing I realized, and it took me a few years to realize this, leadership like parenting, like marriage, like any relationship, all it requires is a willful commitment. You just have to wake up each day and go, you know what? I'm going to be a leader. Leadership is a choice. And so we have to remember, this is like the key thing I would get across to everybody. Like, just remember your followers need you to lead them. Somebody out there right now, 
the, 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 when the teacher is willing, right, when the student is willing, the teacher will appear, right? Mm -hmm. They need you to be their leader. There are potentially millions of people out there right now who are waiting for you to guide them. And they want to be led too. People want, want and need, they need help, you know? And I talk about reframing what we think leadership is because we think of le uh, the, the quote at the beginning of the chapter is from John Maxwell, leadership is influence. Three words, three simple words, leadership is influence. We think, well, I got to be the Tony Robbins in my industry to be a leader. I got to be two miles ahead of my audience. I got to be the expert on everything to be, you know, the leader. And the reality is, and this is the story that I tell in the book is I mentioned earlier that like when the pandemic hit, I got into hiking. And there's a particular hike when I when I told this story that I always think about. It's in the mountains of Tennessee. And you go like two miles up, you're like 4,000 feet up. And then you go for about two miles along this ledge and then about two miles down. And there's multiple areas along this ledge where like one wrong step and you will die. You are not going to survive this fall. Like, I don't think it's possible. You're going to fall to your death. And I talk about like, we think of a leader as like the super, you're going on a hike. And you got this super fit friend. Like this is the guy he's been in shape. If you're me, I'm 43. He's been in shape for 30 years. He's super fit. He always, you don't have to ask him if he does CrossFit because he's already told you six times this week. Uh, he jogs in place at stoplights, right? Goes to a cookout wearing bike shorts, smells like soup mix all the time. Nobody knows why. And this is like your super fit friend. And he's up two miles ahead, yelling back at you going, hey, hurry up and watch out. For the, watch out for the what? What am I supposed to watch out for? Yeah, <laughs> that's not leadership. We think we have to be the friend who's two miles up ahead. And we think that's leadership yelling back at me to hurry up. No, leadership is he's one step ahead of me. And he reaches back and he grabs my hand and he says, hey, watch out right here. It's slippery and dangerous because he's been on this path before. That's the only difference. He doesn't have to know the whole path even. He just yeah. has to be one step ahead of us. So when we reframe that and think, okay, I've only got to be one step ahead of my followers. That's it. Just got to be one step ahead changes how we view leadership. Yes, exactly. I love that. I, I love it. I love it. So far I can tell that it, people are going to really, really enjoy this book and it's going to help not only impact the reader, but also the, the people that the reader is going to impact. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us have imposter syndrome where we feel like, you know, totally. and you, you totally just completely, um, I still get imposter syndrome <laughs> sort of like, I, oh, every day. I do. Yeah. 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 It's like, Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, think it ever goes away. Uh, you know, uh, one thing, especially for people who are starting out, there's a quote in the book from, uh, from my friend, John Acuff. And he says, never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stephen Furtick says the reason why we struggle with insecurity is we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reels. And, and if you think about like, We've all been there. I've been there. I, I now run a very successful company. We've got team members. And I'm, I, I had this thought today. I had I had like four podcast interviews today, Krista. But in between, I thought I would have, like we came back from a two-week vacation as a company. And I'm thinking, I've got to have other stuff to do. And I looked down at my list and I'm like, I already did the other two things I was supposed to do today. I have nothing to do for the next 15 minutes. And we're going, that is such a cool thing that we're in the midst of this big book launch. And I have the team to not have to have any, I can go 15 minutes and not have anything to do. I just went and sat down for 10 minutes and took a break. I was like, that is the craziest thing to me because I'm used to that. But you know what? I've been there seven, eight years ago. I was the guy that in between interviews or whatever, when they were doing a big product launch, I had to do this and that. And I had to update the ClickFunnels thing. And then I'm sitting there and I'm wondering why this thing on ClickFunnels won't go where it's supposed to go. And I'm banging my head against the table. That's my behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. My behind, we've all been there, but we're comparing our behind the scenes, beating our head against the table because this thing won't work or, you know, the page won't update or the, whatever it is, all the things that we do when we're starting our business, you know, we got us in one, you know, VA maybe, and we're doing all the tech work ourselves. We compare that to Tony Robbins. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or people will say there's an overnight there's success, but there's, 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 you know, they don't see everything that happens beforehand, all of the failures, how long it took. They don't know. And yes. see, they just see all of a sudden, oh, they just came up overnight. It's like, no, they've been creating content for three years, you know, seven days yeah. a week and, you know, paying Peter to beg, beg, beg Paul or whatever that saying is. And yeah. yeah, no, I love it. Okay. So now yeah. monetization. So you also talked about 
like mm. monetization. And I want to, I, I think that's important. Um, I mean, I think honestly, every single step of the book is important, right? It's like, it, I like that you give the, a true path, a step-by-step -step on how to do it. And I've, I'm in the online industry. Um, I, I launched five years ago and I, I know everything you're saying is so, so true. It's like, there is a path and all the things that you're talking about are so important in in the success of it. So I like that you're, you're building it out and giving it a step-by-step -step for people. It's weird. And even today, I was just thinking like, I'm launching this new thing. I'm thinking, how am I going to do that? Like, how do I don't remember? I don't, I don't remember even how to do it. So I can't wait to read your book <laughs> to remind <laughs> myself of what I did. Yeah. And, and I've heard so many people like, uh, it's real easy for me to say, you know what, skip to step nine. Cause that's all about monetizing. I have a friend of mine. He's, he's oh, runs wow. a multi seven figure business. And that story that I shared earlier about my dad with the lead magnet. And I walked through and I talked about how like no lead magnet should take more than three hours to create on the front end. You know, not, especially not when you're starting out. And I talk about how, like, here's the process for creating a lead magnet that converts. Number one, identify the number one problem your audience has. Number two, solve it. That is it. Don't identify three problems, two problems. Don't solve two problems. Identify one problem and solve it. Those are the two steps. Mm -hmm. And normally that can be like a checklist or a cheat sheet or something like that. And he was like, Matt, we're doing, you know, they're doing over a thousand leads a week that they're bringing in for their email list, right? Uh, again, multi seven figure business. And I, he was like, I read chapter four. He said, I was honestly going to skip. I was, he was just skimming around the book because I gave yeah. him a copy and he was like, I was going to skip the first few. I was like, I don't even know why I bothered to read that chapter. And he's like, and then I read the story about your dad and I went back and read the whole rest of the chapter. And he's like, we re-engineered. They got an advanced copy. So they had it like six weeks ago. He said, we re-engineered our lead magnets. I told my team, boom, we're going to take one day and we're going to re-engineer our lead magnets. And we followed your rule. We took no more than two hours to create any one of them. And we got them up. He said, our opt-in rate went up 40%. Wow. Now, this crazy. is an established business owner. So what yeah. I'm saying is to, to give you some perspective, that's an additional 400 leads. That's 20 some odd thousand leads a year, additionally to his business, to a guy who's already doing well into the seven figures. My point is don't skip ahead to step nine. We'll, we'll talk about it, but we're not going to skip ahead guys. Go through sequentially because when, when you get there, you'll be ready. And so step nine is all about monetizing because it, this is the key takeaway. It does not serve your audience for you not to monetize. All right. One of two things will happen if you're not monetizing. Number one, well, actually both of these will happen over time, but the first thing is you will eventually burn out. Like I, I found this to be true. I was having a huge impact. I had an old, a platform 10 years ago, Krista. I was in the personal growth space and I was helping people. I was saving marriages. Uh, we had pe multiple people said that they were thinking about killing themselves and they didn't. I was having an impact. People were like, you you helped me you know, lose weight, be better, quit smoking, all these things. Like I was helping people. I wasn't making any money though. Yeah. And the problem was, <laughs> if I, I give up on that, if I burn out, because here's the deal I found, this was kind of funny. And I'm, I'm being a little bit facetious when I say this, my kid's soccer, about $2,000 a year per kid. Uh, I can't forward them emails saying, Matt, you saved my marriage and get a discount. The mortgage company, we don't have a mortgage anymore, but when we did, I couldn't like, it didn't get me a $300 discount on our mortgage each month because I was impacting people that, that, that they only take money. So here I am, I'm busting my butt on this platform. I'm changing people's lives and I'm not making any money. That's not sustainable. So the world misses out on my message and I'm no longer able to impact them. The second thing is as I don't monetize, I am conditioning my audience to expect that. Wow, Matt just has free stuff all the time. This is great. And then when I finally do try to sell something, they're angry at me because I've conditioned them for two years to expect this. So here are your two options early on. Number one, create a product. Problem is, you don't know what your audience wants. You don't know, you don't even know who your audience is usually when you're first starting out. You, you learn that over time. I learned my audience, my average age of my audience is 54 and a half years old. I would not have thought that. I didn't know that, but I learned that. So number one, you create a product. You're probably not gonna sell very well because A, you don't know what they want. B, you don't know what price point they wanted at. C, you don't know how to market it, all right? So you're probably gonna suck at all of those things and you're gonna mess it up. Option two, you just give away content free indefinitely. The problem is we talked about that, that that's not sustainable. That's what they've begun to expect. And so, so many people, you've seen this, Christy. I know you've seen this because so many people are like, well, you know, you have to wait till you have a certain number of followers. You have to create content for a certain number of years. Uh, like, and then they disagree about how many followers and how many years it is. You got to have this many subscribers before you monetize. No, monetize on day one. When you have a small audience, 
No one's even paying attention to you. That is the perfect time to start monetizing. And ultimately, it's all about mindset because how you view making money from your passion is ultimately what's, what determines how much money you actually make and how much of an impact you can have. And so I want to get you into that money-making mindset on day one of your platform. Mm, I love it. I'm, I am super excited, Matt, to read the book. Number one, I've worked with you. I've seen your your passion for people and, and you know, it's basically what you do online already and you've got mm. experience in it. And I believe you need to learn from the person that's done the thing that you're trying to do. Um, and so I yep. know this book is going to positively impact so many people. So, okay, steps one through 10, everyone, the book is launching. How do people get um, an advanced copy? What are the details? What do they need to do? I'm going to make sure this gets out ASAP so that we oh, can thank get you. this in the hands of your readers before your launch. Yeah, you can go, uh, you can buy it anywhere. If they sell books, so Amazon, Target, Walmart, you know, Barnes and Noble, if they sell books, um, they they sell my book. Like we even had an order come in the other day from a small bookstore in Hamilton, Ontario, which was kind of cool. Uh, uh, so anywhere they sell books, you can get it, but the best place to get it, guys, go to passions into profits, book.com forward slash Krista. I know Krista will put that under for you. So you guys can easily click on that. It's a little bit of a long URL, uh, passions into profits, book.com forward slash Krista. We've got a ton of extra bonuses there. Uh, we've got a, what I talked about in step one about clarifying who you help and clarifying who your audience is. We've got a, an extra bonus workshop on creating your ideal customer avatar that goes along with that. We've got an email marketing masterclass, tons of extra bonus lessons, uh, just some really cool stuff, almost a thousand dollars worth of extra bonuses. So make sure you go through that URL so you get all the, uh, all the extra bonuses. Awesome. Okay, everyone, I'm the, the notes are going to be in the, the description of where to get that. Um, and shouldn't they order it soon? Like, don't you want them ordering it by a certain date or does that make a difference? Yeah. I mean, order it. Why wait? Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. I want to get this in your hands as soon as possible because uh, I mentioned you want to go through sequentially. You want to start at step one. Uh, the sooner you start step one, the the sooner you're going to be on the right path. I'll, I'll say, I'll share this with you real quick, Krista. At the end of chapter two, end of step two, uh, commit to leading. We talked about that. There's something it's on page 45, probably one of the most important things I ever put together it's a leadership commitment. It's a very simple one. Um, you fill it out and you sign it. So you say, hey, I, you know, your name, commit to being a leader. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you go on and you say, the world needs my voice and my message and I will not shrink back from sharing it. And then you go on to talk about how your avatar needs you and that you're committing to leading. I'm going to tell you right now, we've had people like, they're like, yeah, you know, whatever. I saw that. I said, one of the guys, I remember he, he wrote me a, a, a Facebook message the other day. Again, this is a friend of mine. Like he got an advanced copy of the book. He's somebody that he's, I'll just say this. I'll put it this way. He's one of the people, um, he's not on the back of the book, but he's on the inside. He's one of the people who endorsed the book. He's a best-selling author, right? Um, and he said, I never fully understood. He said, I filled that out. I don't know what made me do it, but I filled it out. And he said, I woke up the next morning and he said, I literally hit the snooze button and then had this thought. And I went and he, he texted me, he said, dang it, Matt. Your stupid leadership commitment got me out of bed this morning. And I was like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, and he's like, I went into it. He's like, I went downstairs and I wrote some stuff that I needed to write, you know, to get out to my audience. He's like, he's like, thank you for, you know, for doing that. Cause it even was able to, to help him. So there's something about like signing something like that and, and making that commitment that really does just, it changes the way we view ourselves. I, I am so excited. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy to know you. I'm so happy to get this into the hands of my listeners. Um, so uh, one more time, a URL for your book, just before we sign yep. off. Passionsintoprofitsbook.com forward slash Krista. Okay. That'll be in the show notes. Matt, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you learned something. You, Most of all, know this, and that is that um, listening is great. Knowledge is not power. Implementation is. So at this point, you need to stop what you're doing, go to the URL, buy the book, read it, and then comment in the show notes later and tell me what you thought. Matt, thank you so much. You're amazing. And I will see you next time. Thanks, Krista. Everyone, I hope you're so fired up. I'll see you next time. Make it a great day. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. 
Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.